Let's do an example that will require us to shift our thinking about, about finding an exact area just a little bit. So this is a maybe a little bit more advanced example. Uh, let's try and find this area here, the area under the graph of the square root of x as x goes from 0 to 1. So if we started this normally, and you'll see that's a bad idea, but we'll find out why in just a minute. We would take the length of the total interval divided by the number of rectangles, and this would be the width of each rectangle, 1 over n. So we would we would have the first rectangle, uh, uh, the first x value at 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n, all the way till n over n, which of course is just 1, our last rectangle. Okay, then we would find a formula for the heights, and I think at this point you should be pretty good at this, which is just, it's just going to be i over n. This is the height of the ith rectangle, right? If we want the height of the, the second rectangle, we plug in 2 for i and we get f of 2, 2 over n, which is that height there. Okay, you understand that. Now what happens is, is we're going to write a sum, and a limit of a sum really, but, so we'll, we'll write this limit out here. The limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of uh, as i goes from 1 to n of f of i over n, f of i over n, oh geez, sorry about that, i over n times 1 over n. Okay, so now this is where the problem lies. Because we have to plug i over n into this function, which is the square root of x. So just like we normally would do, we would we'd plug in our f of the i formula, f of i over n in this case, into the function, and we're going to get the square root of i over n. And this is where we're in trouble. We don't have a formula for the sum of the square root of i. We have a formula for the, the sum of just plain old i, of i squared, of a constant, but we don't have the, the, this formula, so we can't really use this, this summation. So we have to rethink, rethink what we're going to do. And we notice that the problem came because we had to plug in i over n into the square root of x, so maybe what we'd rather do is plug in something like i squared over n squared into the square root of x, which will the i squared over n squared is a perfect square, so the square root of i squared over n squared, of course, is is a uh, sorry is a uh, simplifies nicely. It's a perfect square, so the square root is is simplifies really easily. So why don't we try that? Why don't we try rethinking this problem with that in mind? So f of i squared over n squared, that's what we're shooting for. So this is where we have to switch our thinking around a little bit. So now we're saying, okay, no matter what, uh, no matter what the height of the i-th rectangle is going to be f of i squared over n squared. Now think about what that does. What does that do? That, that means that i squared over n squared, those are just x values, right? We're plugging them into the function to find the heights. So the height of the first rectangle is going to be f of 1, 1 squared, sorry, over n squared. So that's an x value. f of that x value will give us the first height. And then we're going to have f of 2 squared, which is 4, so let me just write a 4 here, over n squared. And then f of 3 squared, which is 9 over n squared. So that will be our next x value. So this forces our choice of x values. Forcing f, uh, the height of the ith rectangle to be i squared over n squared forces our choice of x values until we get to, uh, finally, when i becomes n, we'll end up with n squared over n squared, which is just 1. That's exactly what we wanted. OK. so. Forcing our choice of x values, well now you can see it's pretty clear that the width of each rectangle is different. The width of each rectangle now depends on what i is. So we could write this as instead of uh, h sub i, w sub i, but more commonly you'll see this as delta x sub i. 
And delta x makes sense because the width of each rectangle is just the change between the x values, right? The, the width uh, from the first rectangle to the second rect or the, sorry, the change from the first x value to the second x value, that really is the width of the, of the rectangle there. So how do, we, how do we compute these widths now? Well, we, we want to find a formula for delta x sub i. So let's, let's take a look here. The f very first rectangle has a width of 1 squared over n squared minus 0. Right? We're just, it's this width here. Maybe let me get a different color out. Here in pink, that's this, that width there. That's the width of the first rectangle. Okay, so this is uh, delta x sub 1. The width of the second rectangle is 2 squared, which is 4, of course, over n squared, minus 1 squared over n squared. So it's, it's the width of, of, maybe I'll use a, a different color again, it's 4 squared, that's this total distance, minus this distance here. So what we're left with, of course, is just the width of the rectangle. So delta x, this is delta x sub 2. How about the third one? Well, that's 3 squared over n squared minus 2 squared over n squared. That's the width of the third rectangle. And I, you could see that geometrically, I'm sure. This is something going back all the way to, you know, ninth grade maybe this width here is just the difference of the x values okay so what is the the height of the, the, the or sorry the width of the ith rectangle well is it not clear that it's i squared over n squared minus uh, i minus 1 all squared over n squared so I'm sorry that's a little bit small maybe I should rewrite it up here so delta x sub i the width of the ith rectangle is i squared over n squared, the, the, the x value you're on minus the x value right before it. i minus 1, but we have to make sure to square it, over n squared. And when you do the algebra to simplify this, you, you're going to end up with 2i minus 1 over n squared. It's pretty nice that it comes out like that. Okay. So, we have a, a formula for the widths. We know what the heights are. We fixed them from the beginning. Now we can just take our sum. So let's do that. So the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum as i goes from 1 to n of f of i squared over n squared times by the width, which was 2i minus 1 over n squared. Okay, and then we have to plug this i squared over n squared into the square root. That's the whole reason we, we chose i squared over n squared. And we're going to get uh, just i over n, right, the square root of i squared over n squared, times by 2i minus 1 Geez, what did I do here? Oh, geez. I think I may have zoomed in a tremendous amount by accident. Uh, I'm running out of... Oh! Okay. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, view. Zoom. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. I apologize. Anyways, okay, where were we? So, this simplifies to i over n times by 2i minus 1 over n squared. Okay, now you, you can go through the, the algebra of simplifying this and plugging in the summation formula and then finally taking that limit and it should come out to be 2 thirds. So why don't you get the practice of doing that and, and seeing if you can, can, can get the right answer of 2 thirds. Okay, see you in the next video.